Wired Access. We'll do it live. Wired Access. Do it live. Wired Access. We'll do it live. Wired Access. Welcome to a Herd App production of Wired Access Podcast. I'm your host, DJ K Dub Omaha. Next to me is I have a former Husker, Mr. Brandon Kenny, but he is currently the owner of Alliance Sports Training. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Now, that's why I brought you here. Yeah, yeah. But to get people to understand how you get there, yeah. I think it builds that trust so when they want to sign up for you. Yeah. So take it back to when you started in football, obviously. Do you remember, where did you grow up? Where did you start yeah. back in football? Yeah, man. Well, I, grew, I was born and raised in um, Fort Wayne, Indiana, south side of Fort Wayne, Indiana. Um, and sports was everything to me growing up, man. Um, it was it, I grew up in a single-parent household. My dad was in and out of prison. Um, I was the oldest brother of three, so um, I had to play that role. But football and sports in general was just my getaway, man. I was super, super athletic, super gifted, um, but I didn't have all the right teachings. But I just love being out there, man. It was so dang fun. So when you say all this, did this also help you be that figure for your brothers and your siblings? Oh, yeah, absolutely. You yeah, know, 100%. give you more of that structure? Because, you know, any parent can look at football and think about barbaric and so strong yeah, and this yeah. and that. But at no time do they ever just sit back and think about what kids learn, yeah. whether it's discipline, as your case, yeah. someone that might have been a father figure mm-hmm. to you. Mm-hmm. Who's your first coach that you remember? Was it in Pee Wee? Was it in middle school, high school that really got you going about Man, football? Wow. I would say, I mean, I've had a lot of great coaches. I've been very fortunate and blessed. I think the one that 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 really changed everything for me, though, was um, Coach Jeffrey Sims, my junior college coach um, at Forest Scott Community College, man. And that man was a different animal, man. I remember, um, like, us, all of our the freshmen were coming in, um, and we had to go through, like, a check-in line and kind of go over our information and stuff. And my mom was with me. And um, he asked me, hey, um, what's your birthday? What's your, you know, spell your name? And he said, what's your social security number? And then I looked at my mom, and he said, hey, hey, look at me. What's your social security number? I'm like, so I look at my mom again. He's like, what did I just tell you? You don't have no mom no more. Like, so I'm your mom. So he set the tone yeah, just right like away, right away. Like, right away. And I'm like, so, like, I memorized it from then, man. But, like, he was a guy um, that poured so much into my life and so many others. Um, and he did it in such a way of understanding, like, look, like, at the time when I did play junior college, there was a 12-man out-of-state rule. So, there were only 12 guys outside of the state of Kansas that could make this team out of 55 people. So he would bring in like 60 dudes, man. And it's just like figuring it out. And now mind you, these dudes are from different places, Florida, Georgia, different neighborhoods. And it's like, you getting all of these guys together trying to figure out football. Yeah. He had to set the tone immediately, man. And, I mean, literally, it was the best thing that ever happened to me because it was black and white for me, and I needed black and white. If you gave me gray, I was going to take gray all day long. And it was, and, and also helped me kind of transition to playing under Bo, too, as well, and that style of coaching and being able to get that. Because, I mean, I need black and white, man. You can't give me gray, like in that time especially. So when you think of the gray area yeah. of football, and obviously your first impactful coach mm-hmm. that you feel was junior college. If you think of high school, you think of middle school, yeah. and you think where you started with that, is that something that maybe have not gotten you where you wanted to be right mm-hmm. away mm-hmm. when it comes to college mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. because you didn't have someone that held you more accountable yeah. sooner? Yeah. I think, you know, I, don't, I, don't, I, I, won't, put, I won't say that because – I think the coaches that I've had did their best with what, what they could at that time. But I was just – I was a different dude, man. I was a different breed. I was super arrogant, super cocky, and I was super athletic. I was super gifted, man. So, like, I got – I got away with a lot, you know, and, and, and I tell everybody all the time, the better you are, the longer your string is. I think that's anything in life, but there still has to be some accountability in that. And I just think at, at that stage in my life, it was just like, look, this is what we're going to get with this dude. This is who he is. We got to fit like we got to play and we got to figure it out. So it was one of those things. But I, I mean, they they were doing the best that they could with what they had. You know what I'm saying? So and if you go back to the community college route, yeah. what took you that route? Don't want, you know, obviously, everybody wants the D1. Yeah, everybody wants the Alabama, Absolutely. all that. Yeah. What made you have to go 
the community college route first? Grades, man. ACT scores. Um, they just didn't match up in Kansas State. So I played. I played um, high school with Josh Freeman. So that was my quarterback. So every time they cut on the film and watched him throwing the ball, they kept saying, who you keep throwing it to this 84, this big old guy? <laughs> um, so they came to recruit me, man. I committed to Kansas State out of high school, but I just, like I said, academically, I, I didn't um, pass. So I had to go jun the junior college route. So they kind of – threw that on me of like, hey, we can place you in a junior college and we can kind of figure it out after two years. Um, so once I got to junior college on like a gray shirt type of situation, uh, once I figured out like, dude, I can go anywhere, like I can have more schools coming to look at me, I was like, okay, well, I'm gonna open my open up my recruitment to just kind of figure it out in that standpoint. But it was it was academics all for me, man. Seriously. And, and what what was some of the struggles or feelings that you were feeling during that time? Mm -hmm. Because You've obviously overcame them. Yeah. If you didn't, you wouldn't have never played for Nebraska. Yeah, of course. You would never even try to start your own yeah. sports training. Yeah. What was some of those early struggles that maybe some people just don't know how they're thinking they're alone in the struggle? Yeah. Because you were committed to K State. Yeah. You're thinking, I'm going yeah, here. I'm absolutely. going D1, absolutely, baby. Absolutely, man. And then reality hits, and, and like, who's the first person you talk to? Who's the first person you have to run this through that, yeah. that you're not going to live that dream? Man, it, it for me it was it was an effort thing. Um, I, I I mean I could I was capable of doing all the things I, I could have done and should have done in that time, um, and I thank God for the teachers, the administrators, the coaches that did pour into me, um, because it was so many things that happened throughout my career in high school and different things that I remember vividly, but I was just so ignorant to understand that so they were trying as best they could but it was just an effort thing for me man I just thought like I was Mr. Cool I was in a new place I was born in Indiana right moved to Kansas City I'm this new kid on the block and it's just I was I was chasing after the wrong things um so it was easy to get off track and not stay focused on the main thing and that's what it was ultimately for me but the, it was I mean if I were to put the effort there it was I could have easily done it. and I see it now and you know or when I went to junior college it was like dude this all I had to do like now I'm sitting in the front row now I got a 3.4 <laughs> I'm just like are you serious dude like I could have like, been doing si this it was simple it's all man just putting your for a foot in front of you, uh, each other it's all man and you brought up the fact of moving to Kansas City mm -hmm. do you think Obviously, the journey was there for a reason. Yeah. But do you think if you were at home, would you have made it to where you are today? Ah, uh, nah, for sure, man. I and, and and it was such a good thing of like my mom understanding too. Like, look, man, you got to get out of here. You got to figure something out. I, I was mad at her for a long time uh, when we did move from Fort Wayne, Indiana, to Kansas City, because you know I, I was moving away from family, um, friends that I had been with since kindergarten. So it was like it was tough. I'm like, what are we doing? But in the grand scheme of things, and you see the overall picture, it was the best thing that ever happened to me, man, because I, I absolutely needed to see different, and I needed to be challenged um, in a different way, too, as well. So it, it, it definitely panned out, man, to be but the best. But you did go from small city to big city. Oh, yeah. What was the hardest and biggest thing that you had to adjust to? The busyness, man. Like, the busyness. That's why Lincoln was so homey for me, because it was it was easy. It was simple. Kansas City was overwhelming when I first moved there, man. It was just the highways and so much. I'm just like, what is all of this? Because, like I said, Fort Wayne is like the size of Lincoln. So, yeah. super, super easy, super simple. So, that was the biggest thing for me, but obviously, as you get there, you get acclimated, but my heart has always been like a small town dude. That's why I love Omaha so much, man. It's not too big, not too small but it's like right in the middle you know what i'm saying yeah, but yeah you know i got family in arizona i got friends in arizona i got you know friends at different places and i'm just like dude i don't know if i could ever live in like arizona or las vegas or See, whatever it's i like, tell it's my wife busy. all the time i love visiting yeah but home is home yeah home is home i love it i love and, here and, yeah. and as you get older and your kids get older and money frees yeah. up a little more <laughs> the trips to the, the way from home is yeah, good. Yeah, that's cool. I'm down with that. back home is where it's nice to settle. I deal with the cold. I deal with the weird weather. I deal with all that. I love yeah. the food. Like, the food is great, too. So, like, I'm absolutely down with that, dude. Yeah, but come on, For man. Real. Barbecue. Yeah, I mean, Kansas love. Kansas City, yeah, is it? Of course. Where's the number one place? Man, you know what? I am so I feel so shameful because I, I wouldn't even be able to tell you, man. But it's so many different places. Obviously, Gates is a staple, right, in yeah. the hood in Kansas City. Everybody knows about Gates. But it's so many other places. Arthur Bryan. And so many different places that you can get good barbecue. We, from we tried one called, uh, what was it called? Slaps Barbecue. Okay, okay. where was that? I, at? It's got to be town? newer. It's it's over by the over, um, Overland Park, Overland Park, Park okay. area. Right. Yeah. It's got to be newer. Okay. Uh, but it's 
the only way I found it is because there's a um, news reporter up here. Okay. That is from Kansas City. Mm. And when we went down there traveling with her, she took us somewhere else, and my wife was not so happy. <laughs> so then I watched her promote this. I'm like, we got to be good. Yeah. And me, the son, and her went down because we're down there for AAU uh-huh. basketball. Yeah. Sure enough, amazing. Wow. But I tell you, man, barbecue to me can taste good no matter where you're yeah. at. As long as someone does it right, it could be right. And I don't want to be disrespectful. I'm sorry to all my Kansas City family, but it's like, I agree too. I'm like, look, man, barbecue is barbecue and, and <laughs> different people can make good stuff, man. It's just known there, but like I've tasted some good barbecue not in Kansas City too, so it's still love. So let's catch back up after the food. That's okay. <laughs> I love it. That's why I do what I do. So we get to, we get to Kansas City. Yeah. How many sports did you play in high school? Man, I did everything. I did um, track, basketball, football. Yep, track, basketball, and football. And it's funny because, like, I didn't go out to, to for track until my senior year because I was like, dude, I want to go to state in something. I've who, never, wants to, like, who wants to run track? Like, yeah. Right, but it's like I've, I've never been to state. I've never experienced it. So, like, I was like, let's try it. So, like, I went to state in the high jump, with the four by one and long jump. Just going out there. Didn't even know what I was doing, jumping over the bar, dude. I'm just jumping over flat, no bend, but just athletically gifted to get over there. Broke the record my first year, jumping six eight. Um, a really good friend of mine, um, JT White, who went to Nebraska, too, did track. He he jumped it right after me the year after, so the, the record only stood for a year. But, yeah, man, I to did those To know that you had a record. Yeah, that, still love. Like, you know, yeah. Like, you're like, just to have a record that – I know that I did something yeah. first because I. It's funny that you brought up track because that's one sport. My my youngest daughter is a major athlete of yeah. the family, but eighth grade, seventh grade, I always told my kids, "You're going to try something. You're going to yeah. try something. Yeah. You you get to do it for free, fair, especially for parents. Mm-hmm. If you're not listening, get them involved. You yes. never know what they find out. I they agree. love. I agree with that. She man. was a soccer player, select, always playing up. She did track. She's like, I ain't doing track, Dad. I said, no, we're going to try it. <laughs> and then she run. ends up being a leader of the track. She loves really? track. She gave up soccer over track. So it's like you never know what you find out if you've just never pushed yourself mm-hmm. beyond that limit. Just to try it. You know, so if you think of the limits that you push between basketball and obviously track, yeah. what did it do for you in football? How did it help oh, you going into college? Oh, it helped in everything, man. Shape, um, ability, flexibility. Uh, one thing that I didn't understand, you know, my junior college coach, Jeff Sims, kept screaming of like, you got no hips. You got to sink your hips. And I'm like, what are you talking about? Because there's just nothing – like when, you, when you're better – you could just get away with certain things, right? So I didn't really have to be technique sound when I was playing in high school because I could just run around, jump, and, you know, do that. So once I got there, it really started to see, like, the things that I was lacking, but the things that did help, right, that kind of got me over that hump was the flexibility, running faster, um, understanding the right way to run and proper way to run and different things like that because I never thought I would run track at all. Like, but if you also look back, I mean, obviously they didn't have a lot of – the like alliance yeah, sports training. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Agree. Agree. So you didn't have people that would no matter what a coach can do, it's like I always say, like when I coached high school here at mm-hmm. Omaha South for eight years, I was defensive back coach. Okay. So if someone's like, he's a big guy, why yeah. would he teach it? I'm not teaching the speed. The speed, you got it yeah, or you don't. Yeah. I'm gonna teach you the right movement yes. to get to where you need to be. Amen. But that time is not always available mm-hmm. to coaches, mm-hmm. especially at a Agreed. high school level. Yeah, man. Or even lower when you go to uh, middle school mm-hmm. or those. What are some things that you remember? Like, is there is there any outlet that you try to apply more for yourself? Or did you just know because you were the athlete, you didn't need to do that extra? Oh, yeah, it was just that. I'm just the athlete, just figuring it out. I mean, like I said, we had – Playing outside, like that's that's that that was our training, you're right? right? Like you're playing right. outside, playing in parks, playing pickup football, pickup basketball, uh, like that's what we did. So we to didn't under, stop. yeah, and that's yeah. that's what we learned, right? We would watch something on TV, internet, whatever that we did, and then we would go out there and try to mimic it. I remember watching Allen Iverson in elementary school. I remember watching this crossover over and over against Michael Jordan, and I would go home, and my grandma, like her, she had this big old glass screen door, and I would just do the same dribble over and over and over again. That's like how I taught myself. So I didn't have anybody to say, hey, let's go to park and work on this. Let's go work on this drill. So um, that that's the difference because now you do have those type of places, right? And you do have people reaching back to pour into the youth um, to help them with that. And I tell my son all the time, I'm like, dude, if you just listen, 
Bro, the sky's the limit. Like, but I didn't listen. I didn't have anybody. But all you have to do is listen. If you just you, listen, you, you'll never dude. be able to get that tune. No matter. Like, I mean, my son was around. I mean, he's now a junior, going to be going into senior year. Okay. So he's been around football since when I coached back in 2010, wow. back at Omaha. So yeah. he's been around that football, like the the bigger guys. But yeah. he's played since six. But like I'm telling you directly, word for word. What a coach is looking Absolutely. for. Like, I know. Yes, I'm telling and you. And you're not listening or concepting, <laughs> and you're thinking, oh, it's just dad. So, I'm telling no you. matter how much history you have, yes. no matter who you might have played yeah, for, man. getting to the sun is the hardest thing. Yeah. And, it and is. getting to any kid because yeah. it's mom, it's dad. Yeah. Yeah. So, obviously, you get to go from the uh, junior college, mm-hmm. you go to Nebraska. Yep. How was that transition, and how did it start for you? Man, it was a, it, it, it's so funny because, um, you know, you don't really understand what D1 is or what comes with it. Um, obviously, junior college is, is, is a smaller scale and smaller platform, so you don't have all the same amenities and cool things at these big schools. But um, it, was, it was an awesome transition for me because I was coming from a Jeffrey Sims and the way that he coached and the style he coached. So I, was ready, I, I came right in with the right attitude of like, hey, dude, you got to go work your butt off you got to go figure it out you got to go make a name for yourself and do whatever you need to do but I wasn't I wasn't ready for how big it was because I remember coach Eckler I love coach Eckler crazy but I love him he would tell me he said um dude you're gonna be a rock star on campus before you even step step foot here and I'm like what are you talking about? I'm like, come on, man. It can't be that serious. Then we go to the spring game and like my mom is there with me. And I'm like, dude, there's 80,000 people here to watch a practice. I'm like, okay. Oh, oh okay. So man, it, it was a great transit transition for me, man. Just seeing um, the different level of play and, and understanding like, man, I, I'm, I belong here. Like I can play here. I can, I got to figure some things out, but I belong here though. Do you feel the commitment is different from the players? at all between junior college because obviously at junior college you got two routes you got one where you're just trying to get to the next level one way or another Mm -hmm. the other route is i just got to get my grades right and then i'm going to get there so you don't know who you're going up against Mm -hmm. at that level Mm -hmm. what do you what do you feel the competition level um obviously you know because every level has skill yeah it it isn't like you're just going up against the the guys who just decide they're going to hang out Mm -hmm. you know these guys are wanting to eat yeah, agree, agree. And I would say, man, the competition was great coming from the Jayhawk Conference. I mean, I got to play with Jason Pierre-Paul, Jaquan Williams. I mean, so many great athletes, so many D1 athletes. We sent over, you know, just in my two years, there are over 20 guys D1, you know. So we faced great competition of guys that was going Oklahoma, Florida State, you know, these, these guys from Butler and different places. So, like, it, it wasn't a, a huge trade off. now. Obviously, when you're D1, you get you got more players there, right? But yes. I mean, you you're getting solid competition out of those 55 guys that made that roster, and then those same guys that you playing each and every week, you know, on a Saturday or Sunday through those schedules. So um, it was it was great competition to lead me to get ready for um, Nebraska, and I also played basketball. I played bas- so when I went to Fort Scott, I redshirted my first year. And I went out for the basketball team. It was funny because my coach, Jeff Sims, was so mad at me. Like, dude, I'm not paying you to play basketball. <laughs> and I was in there doing open gym. And the co- my coach, uh, Coach Burns was his name. He came out. Like, he pulled me out of practice, Coach Sims. And Coach Burns came out and said, Coach, please. Like, we would love to have him. Like, let him do it. Let him. And so he told me, if your grades drop any bit, I'm taking my scholarship and you're going home. So I got to play my first year, then my second year, I made the team, made the football team, and then I went out again for the basketball team. They had a new coach, and they had watched the film. He was like, dude, you still want to play? I'm like, yeah, I come out. I talk. I talk. Well, I mean, I, not everybody gets those I know. opportunities. Oh, dude, I know. You know. And I called the, you know, Coach Gilmore. Um, um, Ted Gilmore was the coach, the wide receiver coach at the time, and I called him, and I said, hey, what do you guys think of me playing basketball? Are you all right with that? And he was like, yeah, dude. The more married, get your workout, get your training in. I'm like – Cool. So I played my second year, man, and it was even more dope because I got to play three years at Nebraska Pose of just two, right? Yeah. Um, so I was so mad that I redshirted my first year, but in hindsight, I'm like, this is kind of cool because I got three years, man, at, at, the, you at got a Division three years one at a Division yeah, one. You man. got two years of basketball. Come on. It was love. So much love. And, and it's just the opportunities that kept coming yeah. and coming. Yes. You get to Nebraska, you get to the spring game, you're mm-hmm. like, this is crazy. Yeah. What's it like in a locker room 
because I believe you guys have like 108, if not more, yeah. yes. players all, yeah. all around. What mm-hmm. What is that atmosphere like for you coming in fresh from junior college? You got some that are freshmen out of yeah. high school, yeah. you know, yeah. and they're thinking they're going to eat right yeah. away. Yeah, yeah. It's, so what are it, those feelings for it's, you? It, 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 it's, it's great for the camaraderie. Like, I loved it in that aspect. It's so funny. I always joke about this of like, you know, it's days that we would be in practice and we would just be dreading and being so dramatic and being mad. Like, dude, when practice is going to be over? And then we get in the locker room and then we spend like an extra hour kicking it, running around, acting a fool in the locker room. But, like, I enjoyed it, man. Everybody always asked me, what was your favorite part? I was like, bro, the locker room, man, the camaraderie, the love, like brotherhood. The, the brotherhood and all of that, man. So, like, it was different for me getting, like, being – that that JUCO transfer coming in in 09 with guys like Rex, you know, Jason Anchor, Thad Randall were like, they're younger than you, right? And yeah. at that time, I, I had had a son too, a two-year-old son at the time. So I'm like coming in like the old man and I'm with these young kids. I'm like, and they like, dude, how hey, old are you? Hey, I, <laughs> you? You may say that, but I want to give you so much more credit than you probably think. Yeah. Like just going to college and having a kid alone. Oh, for sure. Like, so I was a father at 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 eighteen. Oh, My wow. wife yeah. was seventeen. Yeah, we've been married. We made it. We're almost yeah. empty nesting. Man. you know what I mean. Praise Many God years later, that. but yeah. it's so crazy to think that you're in high, you're in college. You played two sports, mm. had a kid, yeah. and now you're coming to a D one where obviously the the schedule is not oh, the yeah. same. Yeah, not even close. What was the biggest change in your schedule wise when you went from the JUCO to D one? Man, you just the every day, like every minute, every day, everything planned out. Like that's what it was. Because junior college, like you had just scheduling, but you knew your downtime. You knew when you can, you know, do whatever you want to do and vibe out. And it wasn't as much and strenuous. But dude, you get D one. It's like here, 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 here. And it was so funny because even after I graduated, like for the first like two years my body was so acclimated of just like waking up at six and thinking like oh i got something going on i was like bro you graduated like cut it out it's over now you know what i'm saying but uh but yeah so so that was the biggest transition and, and do of course like of course it was tough having a child i like i'm so blessed and fortunate to have gone through that but it still wasn't what a 18, 19 year old kid should have been going through, right? Like, but thank God that he had grace on my life, man, and he was still there guiding me in all of this because some guys, some guys th- that that are in those type of situations fail because they just don't understand. They go back home and say, okay, well, I got to be a father here, I got to be this. And one thing that I really, you know, respect about my mom is she said, look, like I'm like I'm not completely okay with this, but if you just stick this out, like. I'll help. We'll help wherever that we can. We'll figure it out. Like we'll do it together. Like, and I'm like, okay, cool. So they, that let a lot of stress off to just go and focus on football and say, Hey, this is what you're here for. This is what you do. This is what you need to do to accomplish your goal. But then it also can turn or it did at least turn for me into like an idol where I put football over everything. And and it was just like, okay, I got to make it the NFL. I got to do this. I got to make a lot of money to take care of so many people. You know what I'm saying? So. And and when you think of that, where did, where did your child, your son, drive you mm-hmm. in this whole thing? Oh, all of it, man. He, it, it was, it was, he was the basic foundation of it because that's what I would always um, attest everything for. Of like, oh, it's for my son. It's for my son. And some of it was selfishly too, right? Of like, oh no, I got to keep fighting this dream. I got to keep fighting for this NFL dream. I got to go to Canada. I got to do these different things. And it's like, yeah, but this is what you decided to do at an early age. So. You know, in my mind, in my opinion, I don't think you get that same that same light on the other side to say, hey, man, you got 10 years to go fight for this dream. It's like, no, nah, dude, like you got the you got. You gotta, you, yeah, yeah, you got some. You, you got to figure something out. So it either shakes or it doesn't. And I and I kept that, you know, so after it kind of got rocky, I was like, you know what? It's time to go back and figure this out and just deal with it, you know. So. And, and when you're going through this, besides the NFL, was there anything else that you were thinking of? As a possibility, mm-hmm. what were you studying? What was some things that yeah. you were looking for? So um, in, in junior college, I got my um, associates in criminal justice, um, and then I got my um, bachelor's. This is not in, criminal justice, yeah, but yeah, go, yeah, ahead. All, right? go ahead. Not go ahead. Not at all, man. <laughs> and then I got my bachelor's in sociology. But um, it was one of those things of, like, I thought, like, okay, 
if I don't make it in football, okay, I want to own my own business. And I felt like at that time, every athlete said that, right? Because it's, it's your own thing. You get to be on your own boss, different things like that. But I didn't know what went into that. Um, and then the other one was like being a police officer. I just thought like, you know what? This is still kind of same camaraderie, still type of thing. I want to either be that. So that's kind of what I thought. Um, and then obviously like God had a completely different plan of like, no son, that's not it. You're spending your you, wheels. You were close. Right? You were you close. Were close. But you had to, I, I had to go through that, right, to see the things that I needed to see. So, um, but that's that's kind of where my thought process was. But to be honest, man, I wasn't even I was I, I didn't think about that heavily because my mind was set like, dude, you're going to leave. You are going you to the NFL. You're going to figure it yeah. out. Like that's where my mind was at the whole time. And, and when you think of your three years at, at Nebraska, what was some of the what's the number one thing you cherish, and what's the number one thing that you regret you didn't finish up doing? Oh man, I would say. The things that I cherish the most is the relationships that I made, you know, the brotherhoods um, that I, that was created and just all those guys, man, that I still keep in touch with. I still love on um, it. That was the biggest thing. The thing that I regret is not working as hard as I should have a lot of different things, man, where you really look back on it like, man, you could have done so many different things better, harder. Um, to really push yourself. But, you know, it was times that I thought that I just arrived. I made it. And it was like, dude, you ain't done nothing yet, man. Like, yeah, you scored three touchdowns in the game. That's cool. But, like, it was your first career one, right, to start. And then, like, that was it. So, like, when I think about those things, I remember after doing that, coming into practice, like, you know, just real lack of days ago. Like, I was like, dude, really? Like, when I think about that, I'm like, ah, it, like, burns me up, man. Because I'm like. Now, was there anything that coach would have – possibly gotten you mind right through that process i mean yeah they 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 i mean it's, you, it's probably kind of hard i mean you want to reel you back yeah but you also want you to enjoy yeah some of, of it, course you know? and they man I, like I, again i say man i have had great coaches man in my life and in my corner and i think like a coach is going to do his job and do it as best he can but like that kid is just gonna be that kid man whenever you get through and it's just ways, right, to relate and to lower yourself to. Um, and that's what I try my best even when I'm training and with my boys of like, hey, look, this is what this is. This is what you, this looks like. And this is what I'm asking of you, right? Like, these are the things that I'm telling you will literally hinder you if you don't do it. I'm telling you that, you know. So, um, so it was just one of those things of just being arrogant and ignorant, thinking that, like, I got all the answers, man. I got it figured out. Could you imagine social media back then? Oh my then? goodness! And we, we had started tw it, like Twitter it was just getting start, hot. Yeah, yeah. So like we, it was funny because we was competing within our team. Like I was the first one to have a thousand <laughs> followers and stuff. They were like, "BK, you got all this, you got this." But I would always like reply to everybody. I was on it constantly and stuff. So, but yeah, if it would have been like to, oh, dude, I don't even know. It would have been ugly, dude. It would have been no focus. See, I tell my wife all the time because she's like, "You're on your phone." So I, I own a lawn company. I'm yeah, DJ, I yeah. do this. Um, like I'm constantly busy. That's but your I'm like, business. It's I'm like, like if I wasn't having these businesses, so we could do all the extra, I wouldn't do it. Yeah. it it's it's that simple. Real. Like yeah, because it is a mental battle. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. It is how how hard can you go yep. in the paint? Yes, man. And, and when you think of that, did that also add hindrance to what you already had mm. holding you back yeah. personally? Yeah, yeah. Thinking that you have to put so much into it. You know, that's why I I. I for so long, I'm like, God, there's no way you did not not want me to play football. Like I, I could have swore this was the, this was it. Like I did so much, I, I stayed the course, I focused, I, you know, and it was just like, nah, it's like it's a different and bigger purpose for you. And it was, took me so long to figure that out, but I just really thought that, you know, if I if I'm putting in this work, this little work that I'm thinking is a lot, like. I'm, I'm destined for it. I'm good. I know I'm watching these dudes get, I know that I'm going to be there. And it's like, nah, dude. <laughs> so if there's one message you could probably portray strongly is if you thought you did enough, do more, do more, do way more, dude, do. And, and, and even with that, I still not going to guarantee you a spot, but you can live with yourself after that and say, you know what? I did all I could. I did all I could. <laughs> well, I mean, you're, you're speaking the right things as far as you get through the three years of college, yeah. what's the next step? Did yeah. you go to the combine? Did you just do workouts? Yep. How did that all go? So I didn't get an invite to the combine. I got um, just rent, did my pro day, did well, did exceptionally well. Went to oh, It was so dope because I got to go back to Fort Wayne, Indiana, 
where everything started for me to kind of get back to my roots, um, where I started even playing football. So I got to train there with a great organization at the time called AWP. Um, and I worked hard, trained, came back from my pro day, showed out, um, got – well, I, I was projected to get drafted fifth through seventh round, end up getting picked up um, by the Chiefs um, as a, a preferred free agent. So I was there from, like, April to last game of the preseason. Um, so, like, that that process was so cool because I'm like, you know, yeah, I didn't get drafted, but to be able to sign a contract, to pe- you know, for people to know, like, man, BK coming back to Kansas City, like, that was super cool. That whole process of thinking, like, man, this is like, this is what it feels like to really like be here at this stage. Right. And the experience was great to be with dudes that you watched so long on TV now to being in the locker room, like with them, you know, it was super, <laughs> super cool, man. So, well, cool. and I mean, you're thinking back, what, what was that? 2012? 20, yeah. 2012. 2012. Yep. 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 So this is before the championships. Yeah, oh, this is, yeah. This, this is Castle, before, Quinn, this is, Yeah, this Ricky is before Stanton, anybody yeah. gets special yeah, and goes, anything. oh, Chiefs, oh, Chiefs. <laughs> right? You're like, we're still trying yeah. to have our fans not hate us. Yes, man, yes. But the pro day, mm-hmm. do you still feel you could have done more? No, nah, I ball, man. I, ball. I if, if anything, maybe I think I dropped like two or three balls, um, maybe catching all, you, you, you know, the, the footballs you got to you, but. I saw that man. I ran well at. I came in at like two twenty one. I ran four four, four three um, handheld. Um, jump, I mean, I did everything well, dude. And then it's so funny because I mean, the day after me, Levante, Fonzo, uh, Marcel, we all had a workout with Bill Belichick himself. Like he worked us out. So like <laughs> that was even more cool. Where I'm like. And it, and it was funny because, like, after the pro day, you know, your body is spent because, you know, mentally you exhausted everything. Yeah. And it's like, hey, um, Bill Belichick wants to work you out tomorrow. And I'm like, bro, what? And, my and you can't say there, no. Yeah, like, not, no matter what you had dude, planned. You can't they, do nothing. And my family nothing. was there. So I'm thinking I'm going to relax and kick it with them. And I'm like, all right, I'll be here at 9 tomorrow. So, like, I'm sleeping on the couch. My mom got my bed. I'm like, dude. So great experience. But even with that, man, funny story. You know, I was big on, you know, when I would catch the ball, I had a terrible habit of never tucking the ball like Shady McCoy. You don't have to tell me, man. I'm a fan. I got you. (laughs) Like, super terrible, You were one of my faves, but I knew people were hating on the tuck, man. Just tuck the goddamn ball. I'm like, man, I'm just, I'm doing my thing, right? I always thought that. Man, Bill Belichick, he was throwing, we was doing a drill. We was throwing it over the goalpost. And he was just like, okay, I want you to jump up with two hands, catch the ball, tuck the ball. Cool. Man, I'm jumping up there. I'm catching it with one hand, tossing it to him. And he said, hey, catch it with two hands. I'm catching up there, one hand, not tucking it. He finally said, tuck the effing ball. I was like, yes, sir. I'm catching the ball. (laughs) So this is a guy that you, like, most people ideally think of a great coach. Yeah. He's already told you once. Already told me. Already told you twice. What? What mentally were you still thinking not listening, that? man? Thinking I'm I'm some gift to all these football coaches, man. Thinking like, man, I'm. What do you mean? It's natural. Like I want you to, man. He ain't caring about none of that. He's out there in some monarch Nikes with some <laughs> jeans to his stomach. Like I'm telling you what to do. You Did need he still to do have it. his uh, hoodie on the cut off. No, he had, he had, he had, It's funny. He had like a little like a Hawaiian shirt on, dude, running around. It was crazy. Yeah, but Where'd a you, super great experience though. How did you guys, who landed that? Who all created that experience? Do you Man, know? I don't know. I, all I know is that they just came, they they literally was like, hey, um, BK, this, they just pointed us out. Like, this is who, this who we chose. This is who we wanted to. I'm like, for real? I'm like, okay, cool. Like, so even with that, I'm thinking to myself, like, I, I'm, I'm definitely got a draft spot. I seen two or three boards that show me going to the Packers, the Jets. I'm like, oh, I'm out of here. Somebody going to get me. What, what are the boards mentally help you? think about and what do they mentally make a struggle in the long run? Oh man. Well, they, they help you think about picturing yourself there, right? Making the money, being with those guys, being solidified as like a draft pick. Um, the things that I feel like it can hinder you is like being indulgent in it too much. And then when you don't get that, it's like, Oh, I failed. I, this, and for a, for a, a short period of time, it was that. It was like, dude, really? Like, I thought I was supposed to get a draft spot, this, this, that, and the other. But when I seen the love that I got, like, from still signing a contract or free agent contract, it was like, 
Okay, that's all good. Like it's all like it's straight. We'll figure it out. I'll go compete. It's all good. What was Mama saying that day when you didn't get drafted? Oh, nothing. She was just geeked regardless, man. Was like she? yeah, she didn't really care. They they because I I actually stayed in um Lincoln. I okay. was uh, me and my friend Timo Terrence Moore. Uh, we were just hanging out, kicking it, man. We had to like move out of our apartment and figure that out. So we was like, man, I don't want to watch the draft. Well, let's just go do some stuff. So it's funny because he got picked up by the Ravens coming out, and I had got picked up by the Chiefs. So we went and got sushi that night, kind of celebrated. And then the next day, we kind of went our separate ways. And, and so then you go to this um, Chiefs all the way up until the last preseason yep, yep, game. Yep, after the last one. Yep, even what got was, a catch, too, What was man. the hardest thing through that process, and what was the easiest thing? Man, I think the hardest thing was just stressing every day of like, okay, are you here? Are you gonna make it? Watching other dudes get cut. What they say at the signing? Did that? Was that like in the fine print? Like, here's the process. Oh like, yeah. Well, yeah. Do you I have knew. An agent? Yeah. Well, so it's funny. Um, Josh Freeman, his dad, um, Ron Freeman, was my agent. So, gotcha. um, I mean, I knew going in of like, hey, you're a free agent. You got to figure it out. I had learned from prior guys that were in the league of like ABK, them draft spot dudes. They kind of shoe ins for at least the first year. So like. You're a free agent. You got to go in and be Superman. So I kind of already had that mindset going into it, understanding that. Um, so getting there, it was like, okay, you're going to have to grind. But it was still stressful knowing, like, dude, you can get cut at any time, all these other guys. So to make it as far as I did, I still was impressed with that of, like, dude, like, it wasn't the first game. It wasn't yeah. – you know what I mean? Like, it's you, all the way down you made it through. Isn't it 56? I think so. Yeah, yeah 56 I think so. or 58, so, yeah, one of the two. Man. And then having a catch in a preseason game against the Seahawks and, like, seeing T.O. out there because that's when they assigned him for that little bit of time. Um, seeing my favorite receiver, like, it was cool. And then it was so even more cool that Pierre Allen was on the field at the time, too. Like, so he's calling my name. I'm like, who called my name? I'm like, Pierre, what's up, man? So was it hard for you – like, did you have a – star moment at any time through this process oh yeah or were man. you able to rake it in and yeah no it, it was a lot of times like lining up against like eric berry um javier arenas and like like giving them work like yeah. going home and showing my brothers like hey you know i got hey, my while iPad. you're playing this on the like, mat and look at go this, ahead and put man, kenny on that other wide man, receiver because i my, already went up come against on, barry look at this huddle dog like look at what look at what i'm doing they like Bro, that's Eric Bray. I'm like, I know, and I'm doing that. You know what I mean? Like, <laughs> I'm talking my stuff. So, like, that was cool for me, but it also, like, let me know, like, you can play here, dude. Like, you can play here. And even having brothers like Prince of Mukamara, so many dudes that I still kept in touch with of, like, BK, bro, like, you, you, you should be here. It's so many dudes stealing money, bro. Like, you definitely should be here. Now, it made me feel better, but it's still at the time I was trying to figure out life. It was like... Dude, man, I wish like I wish I was, but I it's like, nah, dude, this time is past. You gotta figure it out. You know what I'm and saying? And so then after the cut, you went to the Canadian League? No, nah, man. So it's crazy. I, I, I after that, I came up here, Omaha, and played for the Nighthawks. I was oh, with the, yeah, in the UFL League for a little bit before they folded. It's funny because um, I did like one of their first commercials really? with their cheerleaders. What? Yeah, I had like a Mon Green jersey on yeah, the 30. Yeah. And uh it was with my guy Willie Garrett. He's now in Vegas making yeah. some noise, but he was doing it up in, in here and uh He's like, you want to be in a commercial? It was actually when I started coaching at Semi Pro. Yeah, like that's how I got the whole connection into even high school. For I real, just, I was gonna play, but no one was coaching. I'm yeah. like, man, people aren't listening. Yeah. We're just hanging out. I'm yeah. not here to hang out, dude. <laughs> but then people started listening. I got yeah. my coaching, but it's kind of weird that you say the Omaha yeah. Nighthawks. What was that experience? I mean, obviously coming back to the Nebraska area. Um, I didn't get to catch a game in the in the in the baseball stadium. Yeah, what was yeah. what was that all of it? Man, like? it was good. And then we had some former hustlers. I played with Phil Diller. Um, Mike Caputo was there. Um, so it was comfortable. We felt really, really good. It was a great experience. I mean, it sucked not getting paid. It sucked not really because we were on the tail end. So after the Mon Green years and the uh, um, the Nelly performances yeah. and all that, like we came like on that third or fourth year where. Yeah. I guess it was no money. So that part sucked. Um, but then after that, I was able to go play um, arena ball in Spokane, Washington for the Spokane Shock. Did that for a little while. Um, ended up getting released. And then I was just like, okay, what now? So for a whole year, I just kind of like worked. So maybe you just, I don't know, you just figure out what comes next. And then that's when Calgary, um, the Stampeders reached out and said, hey, we want to fly you down to Tampa for camp. Um, and then if you if you if you do well, we'll sign you. 
I'm like, okay, cool. So we went down there. They they were supposed to only take three receivers. They ended up taking five because it was so many of us down there balling. Um, so once I got that contract, I'm like, okay, like this is it. This can this, get me this, back this, in the league. Yeah, this is what this is what I've been waiting on the whole time. This is why I've been out a year. So I got to go over there. Super cool experience. Never had been out the country prior to that. So like that was super fun. Um, and then obviously just getting down to the nitty gritty, the, poli- the, the, the politics side of it. Because it's funny because they said, hey, if you don't hear from us by 10 o'clock, you're good. I'm like, bet. So, Eric, you know, you hear the dudes walking up and down. And then, like, 10, 15, I ain't got nothing. Nobody came to the door. I'm like, oh, it's on. I'm calling my mom. I'm like, mom, I think I'm good. I think I'm good. Boop, 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 knock at the door. I'm like, man, let me get out this phone. Open the door. And he's like, man, I can't remember his name, but we were super, super cool. I always would talk to him. He said, man, you got to come with me. And I'm like, you for real? He was like, yeah, bro. So, it, it, But it was love, man, because I had made an imprint the little time that I was there. Well, and you, you said you got to go places you've never been. Yeah. What was that like? Like, did you ever have, like, some little kid moments, like, where you're like, man, why couldn't I just oh, see this? Absolutely. You man. know your mom did everything she could. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But you still know that you didn't get to see the things that you're yeah. seeing now. What yeah. was that like? Oh, that was awesome, man. Like I said, getting a passport, dealing with that, doing that whole process and figuring that out. And I mean, dude, it was so dang cool to say, like, dude, you went over to Canada and they call Calgary like the farm town. Um, but they 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 say it's like the New England of the CFL because just how they treat their players and the facilities yeah. and different things like that. But to meet those guys um, and to kind of experience that, like I played in all the preseason games, man, it had a great time. Ball, man, ball, I had a really really good time. But you know, when I look at it in hindsight, I'm like, Lord, this was all a part of your plan, man. Like completely every last bit of it was you saying, like, I'm gonna show you this, I'm gonna give you this, I'm gonna show you this, I'm gonna show you this, but it's gonna it's going to round you for what I need you for. Well, and that's funny that you say that because I was just going to say, so so far you've had all the way from JUCO, yeah. Huskers, mm-hmm. top of the D1, yeah. NFL draft, yeah. signing a paper, yeah. four f- hardest <laughs> heck months with the Chiefs, working your tail off. Yeah. You get up to the other league, you do some Omaha, you do all this. You've seen so many coaches, mm-hmm. so many people. What is the biggest thing that made you go into Alliance Sports Training? Was it all these experiences into one? Because now, obviously, you've got to be the example mm-hmm. for your kids, yeah. your siblings yeah. still. They still look up yeah. to you, even yeah, if they are grown. Yeah, yeah. You know, what, what sure. made you go this route for the Alliance Sports Training? Yeah, man. Well, I thought, um, you know, I thought me and my wife were, we thought that we were called to plant a church. Um, in 2019, uh, when I gave my life, well, no, I'm sorry, 2018, I gave my life to Christ. Um, we thought that that was the move. We, sh- we, we need to plant a church. And we thought that. So um, as we were going through that process, um, the church I was in at the time, I just started to see things where I just wasn't like, I was like, what is this? You know, I came into the church game really naive, thinking that everybody's good, everybody's this. And not to say that they were wrong, but I just understood that, like, it's a different side of it, too, right, to the church. So, And if it doesn't match your more, I, trust yes, me. Yes. I had a church where I felt at home, and then, boom, things Something flipped. Something happened, you like, bro. And it was, it was just as simple as I got questioned why I was there because my wife was doing, like, vacation Bible school, and I ain't oh. seen her all day. So I brought her food. She was just checking in. Yeah. It wasn't like she was teaching. Yeah. And then, like, two dudes just gave me this weird feeling of, they were like, why are you here? And I'm like, I'm bringing my, and I was a part of this church, but I just wasn't helping out for this event wow. because I was working. And wow. then it was just that simple. And it's like, the bad part is you could see those things and it could push you yeah. far away. Oh, a thousand, a thousand. And, and that's the part where, like, making sure this is good. So, cause that stuff gonna always happen, like wherever you go. Yes. But the the objective, right? Is, excuse me, is to have your relationship here, so you know that's concrete. You know, so that's what we thought. And then the things I started to see, I went to my pastor at the time. I'm like, look, man, love you, love what you're doing, but if this is what church plant looks like, I don't want it. I don't want to do it, man. It's not it. And he gave me permission. He was like, bro, you don't have to. Like, you don't have to do it. You 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 can wear so many different hats, man. You're so talented. Like, you just dream. So I'm like, cool. 
So this is when COVID was happening, going into COVID. Now we're going into 2020. And I was working for a company called Zenith. I showed, sold helmet and shoulder pads to different gotcha. youth teams, youth yeah. organizations. I covered Missouri, Iowa, Nebraska, and Kansas, worked from home. So Great you're, already, gig. you're giving back away, yeah. but not like yeah. where you're like in the game. Yeah, you're like, yeah. I'm going to make sure people are properly yes. fitted. Yes, yep. And then just trying to figure out the coaching thing. Cause I I didn't like I didn't have no calling to go into it. Like people would tell me, hey, you'll be good at this, but I never wanted to do it. So I'm thinking, hey, we doing this, we good, figuring it out, right? So man, COVID hits and I'm coaching my son's team. And then like I live out in Miller. So I, I was at I was under the Miller United organization. And when OPS shut down everything, it it broke me, man. I'm like, how is it that Miller is having football? We're having school, but these kids in OPS, they they're not. And when I grew up, South Side of Fort Wayne, Indiana, Indiana would have been North. It would have been North Omaha. My grandma wasn't dang sure going to be teaching us nothing, and my mama wasn't staying at home no. from work to teach no. us nothing. So my heart really like went out to those kids. So um, what I started to see though, because that year I had got my uh, uh, a team for myself under that organization. So going into COVID. I get on a Zoom call with um, my bosses. They tell me, hey, we want to get on the call quick. We want to talk about, you know, your territory. I get on the call, and I see everybody on the call, the CEO, CFO. I'm like, oh, they about to let me go because I knew – because I, I had made it through a couple rounds of furloughs. So they got on there. They said, hey, man, we love you. You're doing great things, but we just can't – we can't – we ain't got the capacity. All good. So I get off the computer. I'm sitting in the chair. I'm like, dude, what am I about to go tell my wife? My wife is downstairs kicking it on her computer. I'm like, I hear the Lord tell me, you cannot work with what I'm getting ready to do with you. I'm like, okay. So I go downstairs. I say, hey, babe, just got laid off. Don't worry about it, though. The Lord said, I can't work with what he's getting ready to do. So, man, a month later, I'm coaching my son's team, right? Now, this is nothing I ever wanted to do. I just, I said, hey, man, let me just coach my son. I'll, I'll teach him the right way to play, I guess. That's what I'm doing it for. But what I seen was that to have a Miller team, I had such a diverse team. So people were seeing that, too. So unfortunately, though, I was dealing with parents, too, single-parent households where, you you know, you had some of the troubled kids that were just going through stuff throughout the day. So I was getting calls of, like, hey, little Johnny is doing this, little, you know, or whatnot. So I said, hey, bring him to practice. I'm going to pour right into him and it be all good. So one day after practice, I'm pouring into a kid, telling him, you can't do this, you can't do this. And he starts crying. And I'm like, and I didn't expect that. So then, like, I start crying. So I'm yeah, yeah. I'm pouring into him like, you can't do this. Uh. So I go home. I'm coaching with one of my good friends, Cruz, Cruz Baird, who played in Nebraska too, and we're coaching together for this team. And I'm talking to him on the phone. And I'm like, dude, I didn't think I was going to get this much fulfillment out of, like, like coaching kids. I didn't think this was going to be this. So right then and there, man, he start talking, and I hear the Lord tell me, like, I want you to start a sports training business right then and there. And I'm like, a sports training business? I'm like, what do I call it? Now, mind you, this time Cruz is still talking, and I'm just like, like trying to discern what I'm getting. <laughs> You're I'm like, like, I don't want to hear what? the messages. Like, I'm supposed to like, lock what is in. this? And I'm like, what do I call? And he says, Alliance. I said, Alliance. So I didn't have, I had a gist of what it meant, but I didn't know exactly. So I went and looked on my phone, put Cruz on speaker, and I'm like, and it says, and, and when I seen it, seeing bringing people to, I said, that's it, and it hit me. I said, Lord, you want me to bring kids from different parts of Omaha together under one roof, under the innovative roof of sports to teach them the gospel. And I'm like, boom, that's it. So literally the next day, I went and got a trademarked in the LLC. The next week, I started just looking for buildings. Man, I'm looking for buildings. The realtors are asking me, like, hey, what are you going to do for, like, money and finance? I said, man, I don't know. The Lord just told me to start looking for buildings, dog. I, I, I'm so I'm just figure looking. it out. Exactly. Like, the rest will get it figured out. out. So, man, as I'm going through this process, um, I just feel the Lord kind of tell me, like, man, look, you being bougie. You don't need a building um, to do what playground. you need. You need yeah, you, grass. Yeah, yeah, if you're faithful with what you have, fruitfulness will follow. So, man, seven months later, man, we ended up launching it at Deal Park and did it there, man. And from that launched our youth nights in the summer, our community events, our backpacks and haircuts, our um, Alliance Holidays hangout, our two-day conference, youth conference. I mean, all of this stemmed from this. And for me, this is my ministry. This is what God has told me, like, hey, look. You you, I, you 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 don't need to be in a church building serving now now let me make sure like serving as a preacher now I still a preacher message I yeah. serve at my church that I'm well, doing it yeah. but like just not having that title of like pastor no 
I want you to do it this way as through coach. sports, right? Yeah. As coach. So, um, because once you get coach, oh, so yeah, you that's never, forever. you yeah. never You'll lose never, it ever, ever. Now, now, preacher, you can lose yeah. it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You abuse it, you yeah. lose it. Amen. You know what I'm yeah, saying? Yeah, yeah, but, yeah, yeah. But, yeah. Coach, never. If you're doing the right thing, you do it. And they know. I mean, it. I still got I got some of my football players that mow for me. Like, yeah. you know what I'm saying? Crazy. Like, that's or love. they reach out where yeah. they're like, "Hey, coach, I'm you got anything? For yeah, you got man. Anything? That's and you know? that's what it's about, man. The most important piece of all of that is showing these kids that you love them. And when you love them, man, and they know that you can coach them up, you can coach oh, them yeah. up hard, you can push oh, yeah. them because they know coach is gonna be the first one to get in my butt. But when I do something great, he's going to be the first one acting a fool, jumping up and down, loving on me and doing those type of things. So that's what we've seen, man, and we've been able to grow um, like crazy, man, from that this year with our first year being in tackle football. We got 10 teams. So that's where I was going to go with. Obviously, yeah. start out as yeah. Alliance Sports yep. Training. What turns the tide for you to start your own football? Yeah, so uh, my Alliance Life Skills is the nonprofit side of it. Alliance Sports Training is the for-profit side of it. So, unfortunately, man, in youth sports anywhere, right, you just get the prideful coaches, the prideful fathers, and it's just not always done the right way. And some of the things that I've seen in my time of serving is just like, this isn't it. Like, I, I didn't get into this game for any of this other nonsense but other than being for these kids and serving them the right way. Oh, dude, you and don't have just, to tell me. Yeah. There, there's nothing worse then when I have a DB that gets beat, yeah. they don't catch it. Yeah. The other person didn't catch it. They just got beat. Yeah. And you got other people yelling behind you. Ah, 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 ah. And like, I pull the kid off, say two words yeah. to him. What did you see? Yeah. He tells me, I reposition him. Dude gets his first interception ever in football as an eighth grader. Wow. You know what I'm saying? Like, wow. You never know how impactful. Yeah. yeah. Just the atmosphere yeah. you can create. Yeah, man. Whether it's the calming. Mm -hmm. I mean, you're playing one of the hardest positions. Yes. You already oh, know. Oh, absolutely. Yeah, that's DB. Yeah. But just to calm them down for that moment, for them to rethink of what they saw. Yeah. And 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 if they explain to you what they see, and you're able to go, but what about this? Yeah. And they just, yeah. it clicks with yeah. them. Yeah. And, and, and I know some people hate when people, coaches pull a kid off right mm -hmm. away. Mm -hmm. But I have been a guy where I've learned every day of my life and continue to learn where you're not here to just hang it. Like you want those messages right now because you've already forgotten about yeah. it. And your goal is once I ask him what is seen, I can get him to forget mm -hmm. about anything that any coach has said, mm -hmm. any, anything mm -hmm. that has expired right there. Yeah. You know, and you're just like, it's it's that moment of going, I just want you to relax. Yeah, man. Man. I'm not here yelling at yeah. you. I'm not yeah. here upping your stuff. Go do your thing. So you obviously get to the football. How does that happen? Obviously, you're dealing with Millard. How yeah. does that transition? Was there some anything that maybe Miller was like, okay, now he's going to do it? Yeah. Or was it a smooth yeah. understanding? Yeah. Yeah. I mean, it, like I said, it is it. <laughs> It, you see things at different organizations, and it is what it is, yes. and, and they may feel that they're doing it in their right respect, and, they're doing and that's it in okay. Their right like thing. what they Correct. think, but I just felt something so much more on my heart or what I wanted to do and what I wanted people to see um, through the mission of what we're doing. You know what I'm saying? So it, it was a smooth transition, you know what I mean? But it, it's just like anything, right? Some people look at it. I don't look at it as being competitors or with it because it's like, if you're doing what you're supposed to be doing and what God has called you to do, awesome. Kingdom build. Do Sweet. your thing, man. Like, I know where I'm going. We're, we're going to get these kids to the It's all field. good. We're just serving. You know you're what I mean? Right. So, like, that's what kind of grew from it, man. And, like, our first year going into it, we got 10 tackle teams, man, five basketball teams. And we're just, like, working. And, and, and the thing that I pride myself on, man, is just, like, letting the Lord lead it. Like, it, it, he's been leading this from the jump, man, because I know I'm not smart enough. I know I don't have all these capabilities to do these things, man. I'm keeping it real, bro. Like, Dude, you're, like it's you're, real. You're telling me as it's I say real. it all the time, like, everybody's, man, you're doing this great job, but I'm just riding. Come on, man. I'm just riding. Come on, I'm man. not doing anything Come on. different. And that's the best way to live in, like, I, like I tell people all the time, it's so dope being in the will of God, bro, because like I've never had purpose in my life. I've never had direction. I've never had it until now. I never had peace and to understand. You never like, asked the wise yeah, before. Yeah, and now you start asking yeah. the wise, you figure it all out. This is why I'm doing this. This is why, you know, I used to ask all the time. I, I worked customer service for over eight years and I used to ask God all the time, Lord, 
why why am I doing customer service? Like, there's nothing wrong with customer service at yeah. all whatsoever, dude. I loved it. I love people. But I used to be like, Lord, there's I, – like, I know it's something more. I used to tell my old boss, I don't know what this is, but I feel like I should be doing more in the community with kids. And it was like God was there. He was knocking, but I just wasn't answering the door. Like, he was there trying to – like, hey, this is what I need from you. But when I finally put two feet in, he was like – Okay, son, thank you. Now look, like this so, this is what I need. So now from you. you got the Alliance Sports yeah. training. Do you use some of your Nebraska connections to kind of obviously you're probably dealing with, like you said, some kids that have single mother yeah. or single yeah. household, mm-hmm. single parent, yeah. whether it's a father or mother. Yeah. Like, are you using some of those connections? Like maybe taking the kids to spring? Have you thought of yeah, stuff like yeah, that? Yeah, you know? we took we took a few of our boys down to um um a spring practice. Got to let them see some of that. One of my one of my kids, so funny, Keely Moody, gonna be a huge name here soon. Um, but you know, Matt Rule said, Hey, are you gonna or, you know, he's a baller baller. He said, Hey, are you gonna you gonna come to our school? He said, Yeah, if y'all get good. And I'm like, hey, Keely, bro, really, dog? Like, for real? To the guy? Hey, I like, mean, but it's good he because he's he just being himself. Point, he's man. real. Like he, he was just being himself, man. So like, but absolutely, man, we wanna do um a lot of those things. We've been able to do a lot of those things with, you know, our our camps and our conferences and different things like that. Um, I'm always in touch with Prince of Mucamara, always trying to figure out different things um like he wants to have an imprint here um in um in nebraska same with yoshi hardrick i'm always talking to those guys to kind of just see what we can do to partner uh to really bring some like noise to this thing and to hopefully like you know i i, I say all the time and i love both too but you know it's like we got to sew up our backyard when we're recruiting like if we want lincoln to be better right if we want that school to be better down there well, we got to give them something to pull from, right? And yeah. we all have to collectively, like, pour into these kids the right way. Yeah. So when it is time, like we talked about at the beginning of, like, okay, some I've heard from high school coaches, like, dude, some of these kids we get, they, they don't even know how to run. They don't no. properly know how to run. So it's like all of these years they've had in youth – Nobody's dug into that. Nobody's giving them the proper technique to block, to well, catch a pass, I mean, to you gotta, like not, just, not not everybody. Now some people are, but not everybody's doing it. Just think of what you were going through when you were in exactly. you know, just of find the fastest kid yeah. to run. Put him at quarterback. Put him at quarterback. Do sweeps and you know, yeah. figure it out. Figure it out. Yeah, man. Figure it out. Well, now it's all under you. Yeah. How can people find Alliance Sports Training? What's some of the things that maybe uh, if there's some athletes that want to yeah. get involved? Absolutely, man. Just go to AllianceSportsTraining.com. Um, all the information is there um, as far as registration for training, um, for sports. Um the football registration is closing pretty soon, too, as well, May 15th. Um, so we, we're moving in that. Basketball, obviously, will come up in, in here in the fall. But we're just figuring it out, man. We're on Facebook, Instagram as well. If you want to catch us on Instagram, it's Alliance underscore sports underscore training. Um, same on Facebook. But, man, we just really – all we're trying to do is just serve serve our youth, man. Better help, help better serve our youth because it's so, it's, so, it's so many phenomenal organizations that's doing it the right way. Um, and we just want to come alongside and just help as well, man. It's not about pride. It's not about competition. Um, I'm just doing the mission that God has called me to do, man. Well, I appreciate you for coming out on the Wired Access yeah, podcast. Yeah, man, it's love. I appreciate y'all having me. I appreciate it. Me. Another Herd App production. Once again, remember – like he is telling you, we've said it many times, there is a right coach for your son or daughter. Don't be afraid to go looking for yeah, them. Amen. We have one right here, Alliance Sports Training. Check them out. Brandon Kenny, former Husker. Once again, this is a Herd at Production Wired Access podcast. We'll see you next time. Peace. <laughs>